Welcome to the Black Sparrow Media Internet Broadcast Network. Listening to Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a podcast about Linux, open source, and amateur radio for everyone. Now, here are your hosts Russ, K5TUX, Cheryl, W5MOO, and Bill, NE4RD. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned in to episode number 452 of Linux in the Hamshack. The most terrific amateur radio podcast on the internet, and this is our short topics episode. So we'll have a little bit of discussion about open source and amateur radio, and then a blend of the two later on in the program. So we're glad you're here with us. And before we dive into our topics, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MO. And I'm Bill, an E4RD. All right, so we're all here from from all across the globe um so uh so let's get a quick update from ireland how are things treating you over there get into a routine yet yeah yeah we'll get into a daily routine and uh uh which generally means going out and eating lunch (laughs) so getting to try a lot of different places uh here in cork and it's uh it's it's quite fun it's uh it's uh, getting ready for uh, another weekend getaway next weekend so we'll probably have some more to report on that um next time all right really good by the time you get acclimated to ireland you'll be on a plane headed back home i'm sure (laughs) (laughs) so you can you can see what's left of the snow in montana because you're probably not going to see any while you're over there yeah, no, no, I don't think so. It would probably be pretty odd for us to see something here. But um, I'm I'm watching it through the cameras at home, so I can see it, and I'm glad I'm not there to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> you probably get plenty of rain, though. Yes, yes. In fact, we just had a little bit of come spittering through here a little while ago. At, uh, the whole weekend was, uh, you know, it, forecast was like 70 80% rain. I'd say it's probably more like meh. 20%, you know, just kind of overcast and then rain for a little bit and then go away and dry up. The sun was out uh, for our walk, walk around for lunchtime. So that was really nice to, to be out there when the sun was blazing. All right. Very good. Well, since we now have the weather report from Ireland, we can move into our amateur radio topics. And the first one is about something we haven't touched on in a little bit. So, Bill, what do we got going on in uh, digital amateur radio? Yeah, this was a free act. Sorry, free DV activity day. Uh, Moonier K6AQ on the uh, free DV mailing list sends word that uh, due to popular demand, we'll be doing another free DV activity day on Saturday, February nineteenth, twenty twenty two. This event will bring together people interested in HF digital voice on the air for conversation and fun. Uh, contacts using the official application as well as the SM1000 handheld microphones are welcome. Uh, the event time is from 9 a.m. Pacific time or 1700 Zulu on February 19th to 8.59 a.m. or 16.59 Zulu on February 20th, uh, encompassing 24 hours. Uh, suggested frequencies I have listed in uh, uh, in here. Um, you can check the show notes for those. Um, he mentions that this isn't a contest and there's no pressure to make contacts or send logs, but you can always confirm QSOs via the usual means if you like, you know, Logbook of the World, EQSL, etc. cetera. Uh, enabling PSK Reporter in the free DV application and joining the QSO Finder are recommended. However, so are other, so others can see that you're on the air and hearing them, for instance. Uh, feel free to spread this far and wide, like we're doing here on the podcast, and uh, give it a give it a whirl. I haven't done free DV in a in a while, and of course, without HF here, I, I probably won't be doing it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was fun when I played around with it. So give something for you all to try out. I'm gonna try and do this. This was the 19th, was it? So. I haven't popped open free DV in a really long time. So be curious to see how this, how this goes. 
And now that I have a new Shack PC, I'm really interested to see how it performs. And it, I don't even know if there's what kind of development's been done on FreeDB lately. Haven't really been paying attention. So, yeah, I haven't followed it either. All right, we'll definitely have to check that out. So, moving on. Well, this looks like a short one that Cheryl can handle if she's not too busy trying to figure out what a recipe is for next episode. <laughs> Or if she's not paying attention at all. No, I have too many windows open, so... <laughs> uh, all right, hang on. So, our next story is the Tentec service announcement number two. Bob McGraw, K4TAX, reports on the Tentec mailing list the following. FYI, in a phone conversation this date with the owner of Tentec, he stated all radios presently in the Severville facility for repair will be returned to their owners. This is being done at 10 tech expense. Be advised most, if not all, radios are being returned as not repaired. There are no parts orders, no technical assistance, no phone calls, no emails available from the facility. 10 tech ham radio service is therefore terminated. The Silverville operation is suspended until further notice. 73 Bob, K4TAX. And that information came from the Tentec mailing list. Oh, well, that's interesting. Is this is this just from this facility, or is it all Tentec? Is Tentec gone? <laughs> well, that I believe that's the only facility, and uh, I guess the uh, the other product that uh, they also work on, which is the Alpha amplifiers, has kind of been, uh, from what I hear, at least one of the newer models or whatever has been stopped as well, or something i i I haven't followed it totally but it looks like more and more that uh, this whole operation is shutting down uh out of the out of sever whatever severville sever (laughs) severville well it says 10 tech ham radio service is therefore terminated so that to me sounds like they're done yeah yeah i believe they were just doing service because obviously i don't i don't think they were making any new radios but um but yeah, yeah, this this might be the final nail in the coffin for Ten Tech. Yeah, so all their legacy boat anchors will become much more valuable and so on. <laughs> all right, well, moving on, we have one more story in our amateur radio segment, and that is grants to amateur radio organizations, something we've been talking about a lot with uh, ARDC and all of their stuff going on. The AWRL Foundation Grants Program awards limited funding to organizations for eligible amateur radio-related projects and initiatives particularly those with a focus on educating, licensing, and supporting amateur radio activities. Youth-based projects and initiatives are especially encouraged. The AWRL Foundation Grants Program accepts proposals on a cyclical model three times a year. Grant proposals are accepted from February 1st through the 28th, June 1st through the 30th, and October 1st through the 31st. I think I said that right. (laughs) All proposals will be reviewed by the grant committee at the close of each cycle. Once the committee agrees on proposals to fund, they will be sent to the full foundation board for a formal vote. Awardees will be notified approximately one month after the closing of each cycle. There you go. Get your stuff in. Get funded from the AWRL. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm curious why just, that was funny. It was funny. just funny. Okay. It was just funny. <laughs> Good. Apparently, I I'm... figured since we were doing all the ARDC grant funding opportunities, that we could go ahead and mention the AWRL is also giving <laughs> giving some money away for these projects. Right, and aren't they doing some in conjunction with each other? So, yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. But everybody's in bed with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on from amateur radio, we're going into open source, and ooh, here's a topic we haven't touched on in a while. So what's going on in open source, Bill? Yeah, we got a new release of Wine. You know, Windows is not a Windows emulator. <laughs> the Wine team is proud to announce the stable release of Wine 7.0 is now available. This release represents a year of development effort and over 9,100 individual changes. It contains a large number of improvements that are listed in the release notes below. The areas of major changes are, which I actually changed this, but anyway, uh, improved H- high DPI, DPI support, uh, improved HID stack and joystick support, new WoW 64 architecture, um, support for uh, the Vulkan Direct 3D 1.2 driver stack, uh, support for the multiple displays, 
uh, in, in parentheses with caveats, <laughs> various new Direct 3D 10 and 11 features, plug-and-play driver tweaks, updated Mono 7.0, and Unicode 14 support. So a lot of good things from the Wine team, and of course that came directly from uh, the Wine headquarters a website. All right. New wine. We always like wine. Maybe that should be like in the hedonism section instead of <laughs> open source. Because <but. laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit hedonistic, too, running your Windows applications on Linux directly through a quote-unquote non-emulator. But <laughs> Yeah, or running your Linux on Windows like we did last episode. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that, too. Uh, all this craziness. Yeah. Cross platform nuttiness all right cheryl we're gonna bring you in for one more again too many windows open <laughs> so so our next one is new ubuntu with nagware ubuntu 22.04 daily show and i'm about yeah blah, excuse me ubuntu pro notification on login on login today, I was graded by a desktop notification asking if I want to enable Ubuntu Pro. Two actions are available when I click on the notification. Don't remind me again. And enable Ubuntu Pro. Though thanks to a bug, the notification will appear on every login if you click don't remind me. But that will get fixed soon. Clicking the Enable Ubuntu Pro buttons opens the Ubuntu Pro tab in the Software and Updates utility, the Notification and Settings panel. Here, one has the ability to attach a machine to an active Ubuntu Pro subscription. Interestingly, the blurb mentions the Ubuntu Pro is free for personal use on up to three machines. And this came from OMG Ubuntu. Interesting. I don't use Ubuntu Pro. Do you? Does anybody? <laughs> no, I think it was, It wasn't it like Ubuntu... Uh, something else like it was called like Ubuntu Advantage or something like that before I can't remember but um, I think I had hooked up my, my machines to it at one point in time and I believe they mentioned well, I was just reading the article yeah Ubuntu Advantage uh, <laughs> that's what it was called before yeah I, I have had a login before there but um, yeah I haven't played with it in so long and then I don't really run Ubuntu locally at the house anymore so um, I'm just wondering is like yeah, is this is this the next thing that Canonical is going to do is just throw Nagware on uh, on their primary release so they can get people to subscribe to Ubuntu Pro? Is this this isn't the same thing that was like Ubuntu One or something like that? Is it? Doesn't I think so? I think it's like that all same that all the same thing. So you could like sync and keep track of your machines. So it's like a Active Directory or Azure kind of thing, but for Canonical, I guess. Uh, yeah, I suppose I I not I in the, the yeah not in the sense that it's virtualized, but in the sense that you you have a um, you have a sort of directory of all your instances and things like that. So yeah, sort of yeah yeah I guess so. I, I kind of think of it along the lines of like Team Viewer, where you can see all your machines that you've connected to it and stuff like that. But I don't I don't know what functionality it gives you. I haven't messed with that. Nor have I looked it up after reading this article. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I was just like, really? I'm kind yeah. of like, you know, just breezing over the information here. Um, it's, it's an operating system that runs from the desktop to the cloud to all your internet connected things. Uh, is your premium image delivering comprehensive open source security? Is your compliance? Blah, 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 blah. Um, Ubuntu Pro for Google Cloud. So, so it sounds like something um, that's interesting. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe we'll like have to look at that for <laughs> a topic next time. Figure out exactly what the hell it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe we can get somebody from Canonical on to talk about it. I'm sure it's some paid service, though. Well, yeah. Well, it's free for up to three machines. <laughs> yeah, it, it says it's basically for small businesses uh, with enterprise grade commercial support. So, oh, that means money. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, moving on, we're down to the Linux in the Ham Shack segment. And I don't think this is particularly Linux in the Ham Shack, but, you know, sometimes the pickings are slim. So, 
This is a story from blog.tv, and it's send text messages over ham radio with ham messenger. Most ham radio operators communicate by voice. I guess that may be true, although it probably depends on who you ask. Looking at UCW ops. But ham radios can transmit other kinds of data. Dale Thomas built Ham Messenger, which is a portable device that enables users to send text messages through their ham radios. If you remember the early days of the Internet, you have heard for yourself that audio can carry digital data. Dial-up Internet uses a modem to transmit that audio through standard phone lines. Ham Messenger uses a similar methodology to encode a text message as audio. Ham Messenger contains two Arduino development boards. One Arduino Mega handles most of the functionality, and a separate Pro Mini acts as the micro APRS modem. A Neo 6M GPS radio module lets you send positional information along with your text messages. The Ham Messenger's custom PCB has a small 0.96 inch OLED screen to display the messages. You input text via an M5 stack card KB keyboard. Power comes from a pair of 18650 lithium-ion battery cells. The output from the ham messenger is an audio signal, which feeds into any ham radio. Thomas plans to design an enclosure soon, but you can follow his instructions to put the rest of the hardware together right now. And there was actually an update which showed some preliminary 3D modeled uh, enclosures, but who knows where that's at. So that, like I said, came from blog.tv and a link to the GitHub repo where it describes the hardware and software installation is in the show notes. It looks pretty, yeah. pretty clunky. Yeah. I mean, you know, having owned a Skytail pager <laughs> where you could do two-way paging from a tiny, you know, little handheld clicky, clicky, clicky thing. Um, yeah, this seems like a lot of, uh, a lot of junk for for what it does yeah absolutely and it's it's really the at least the way it's deployed now it's for like near near field not near field but you know close in communication like vhf between handy talkies and stuff like that yeah yeah so So, it's probably using fm or something like that so can't use it on hf yeah well at least for now but i mean i'm sure it could be adapted if it was necessary but there are other Messaging oh, it's apps. It's on a- APRS. That's why. Yeah, it's based on APRS packet. It. So uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was it was something to report on. It's a thing that exists in the world of amateur radio and uses open source products like Arduino's. So yeah, there you go. What is the uh, license for the software? Did you put a license file? Oh, it did. I don't, I don't know if there was a license file in the GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. GNU GPL three. Well, see, there you go. Fits the bill. It's amateur radio, and it's open source. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the that story from Blockpot TV was, like, from July or something. But <laughs> Yeah, I think they just um, had that on Hackaday, though. I thought it was just yeah, not very long ago. Yeah, November 8th, 19th on Hackaday was, was reposted. Yeah, but Hackaday is an advertisement, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, half the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that actually brings us down to the end of our stories. So, no more stories, at least not for this episode. But we do have a social media roundup, and hopefully Cheryl can close out of some of her windows before we get around to actually having her start reading. But I, I actually could figure out how to get the the people who join us on Facebook this time around. So the list is fairly long. So have fun, Cheryl, with the social media roundup. Thank you. So our beginning of our list are our Patreons. And in that list is Reginald Addo, William Large, Steve Annis, Andy Cowley, Gary Tibbetts, David Scarf, David Slaughter, Jim Lawson, Patrick Eng, Douglas Schock, Eric Guth, Brandon Rozak, Michael Burdak, John Spriggs, Robert Lewis, Robert Pitts, David Jagway, Cubicle Nate, Samuel Vimes, Peter Caffrey, Don Rhodes, Paul Griffith, Jonas Rulo, Donald Gover, Herb Garcia, Steve Metcalf, William Heckelman, Randolph Smith, and Andy Webster. For our subscriptions, we have Vincent Martin, Bob Alberg, Paul Mooney, Craig Kreisen, Chris DeLuca, Eric Muller, Carl Backus, Isaac Gear, Thomas Foy, Michael Burdak, Kevin Ivey, Tony Coberly, Ronald Ike, Johnny Kinsey, Fred Cole, Bill Pewter, Robert Halliday, Wayne Hale, John Clark, Steve Hepler, Michael Jopling, Howard Dittmer, 
Todd Bowers, Michael Carey, A. Taylor, Dylan Engel, Jim McKenzie, Bill Collins, Robert Black, Darren King, Randolph Smith, Robert Yerke, Steve Biela, Alan Wilson, Mark Farrell, and Jeff Zimmerman. For Facebook, we have Jeff Scott, Wayne Latang, Gerard uh, Vrieswick, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try that one. Art Mitchell, Robert Burton, Don Coburn Jr., Fred Armentrout, Steve, Cor- or excuse me, Stuart Corey, Any Watts, Peary Andy, Staley Keener, Jim Rayburn, Wayne Micklow, Adam Oles, Josh Hatton, Chris Fisher, Patrick Muffler, and Les Nessman. On Twitter, we have at alt underscore H2OE at QF56ND, at JT Radios Are Fun, at Ward Notchman 103, and Halibut Alec. On YouTube, we had Peter Carr, Walter Whitman, and Steve Gint. On Discord, we had Blaze K, M0 Pun, Mr. Cuddles, Dave, VE5UO, and Jazz underscore KCS. There was no one on the mailing list and no merchandise sales. And I'm assuming that Dave must have lost his original credentials, VE5UO, because he was connected to the server at one point, and then he logged in again. So <laughs> and That can't happen. <laughs> I, I also saw that uh, just now, during the recording, KE5WMA reconnected to the Discord as well. So he's he's been a long-time listener, and... So there must maybe there's some issue with Discord. I don't know. But we've had a few people re up on Discord lately, but not a big deal. Welcome back to everybody, and welcome to all the new folks on all of our social media platforms. And with that, we have actually come down to the end of the show. So we want to thank everybody who was listening for our live recording, and for the ones we know about for sure, we had Ted W A Zero E I R, John K One B T Z, and Bill N Three A J. And there may have been others that we don't know because they didn't hold their hand up or whatever, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so with that, we have come down to the very bottom of this recording of episode 452 of Linux in the Ham Shack. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hold out, you know, for a few days, and the weekender will be upon you, and you'll find out all of the fun things you can do over the next couple of weeks But in the meantime, have a great one, and we'll talk to you all very, very soon. This has been episode number 452 of Linux in the Ham Shack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73. Thank you for listening to this episode of Linux in the Ham Shack. LHS is a community-sponsored podcast. Our website is located at lhspodcast.info. You can support the podcast by visiting the LHS Patreon page at patreon.com stroke LHS podcast or by using the contribute list on the homepage. We have a presence on Discord, Facebook, IRC, Twitter and YouTube. You can also drop us an email at info at lhspodcast.info or leave us a voicemail at one nine zero nine. NHS show. That's 1-909-547-7469. Visit the online LHS merchandise store at shop.lhspodcast.info for fun and fashionable show themed merchandise. Until next time, remember to always heed your hedonism.